Hello everybody, um, it's me, Jenny, um, and today I would like to um, create a video about my very first altar. Now I've seen an awful lot of um, posts on Facebook, posts on Tumblr, comments on YouTube, you know, just generally comments everywhere saying I want to practice paganism, I want to practice Wicca, I want to you know, practice witchcraft, but I can't afford X, Y, Z. I can't afford an altar cloth, I can't afford an athame, I can't afford all of the fancy tools and things that everybody talks about, everybody puts it up on, on Facebook, they put up these beautiful pictures of their gorgeous altars and things, and people look at that and go, I'd love to be able to create that, but I can't afford it at the moment. And I wanted to share what my very first altar was, because when I first started practicing witchcraft, um, paganism, this path, I was still quite a young teen. I can't quite remember exactly how old I was. I was maybe 14 maybe 15, that kind of age, you know, I was very young and didn't have a lot of my own things, a lot of my own money, um, so I didn't have the things, you know, I was a brand shiny new baby witch and I didn't have any of the things, but I wanted to get started. So, I improvised. <laughs> I started out with Scott Cunningham's book, um, guide Wicca, a guide to solitary practitioner. I would love to be able to sort of show it to you now, but unfortunately I have donated my copy because I'm no longer a beginner witch. Um, but in that book there was a, a diagram of how you should lay out an altar. This is how you can lay out a Wiccan altar. Now I don't really identify as Wiccan anymore, but that's definitely where I started out. I started out down the solitary Wiccan path. Um, and I have changed and grown and learned since then, so it's definitely very much my roots. So, it said you need to start off with an altar. Now I didn't have a beautiful slab of rock or a gorgeous carved wooden table or any of that. But what I did have, and still have, are lots of plastic storage boxes with a flat top. Now this is literally just a storage box. It is made of plastic. Um, it's probably one that I had back then. Um, when they break I just sort of get a new one. This one currently has some of my clothes in it. <laughs> so it's just a storage box. Now this is a working surface that you can place things on. But it doesn't look all that pretty. It doesn't look all that witchy. So I thought, mm, okay, well that doesn't really look the part, but I can cover it with something. Now it's suggested in the book that you have an altar cloth, something specially just for your practice. Me being a little teenager, I didn't have my own things, a lot of my own things, I didn't have a lot of my own money back then, so no, I couldn't afford to go out and get an altar cloth specifically for this. So I thought, well, I'll just cover it in what I can find. So what I found was this. Now this looks quite fancy, doesn't it? It looks all silky and smooth and it is very nice to feel. But it's not actually specially bought for this occasion. This is, or was, part of a costume that I had for one of my ballet productions one year. Um, I think when I was about 11 years old, I, I did ballet from being sort of three years to when I went off to uni at 18 years old. Um, and we did a ballet show every other year. And one year, part of the costume, I can't even remember what the costume was, but part of the costume was this lovely bit of floaty blue cloth. Now I thought, ah, oh, well, just fold that in half, 
there and doesn't that look so much better? A lot less like a plastic storage box now. But you can use anything you want for an altar cloth. You can use a tablecloth, a tea towel. I quite like to use sarongs. So this is one of one of my sarongs. It literally is just, just a sarong. I bought it from a beach shop for I think about seven, eight pounds. Um, just for something to wear on the beach. It's really nice, it's lightweight cotton. Um, it's got holes in it. <laughs> but I have used this as a sarong. I have also used it as an altar cloth. Um, it's fabulous for any sort of fire ceremony or a lunaza ritual or a summer solstice ritual, anything with that sort of fiery energy um, because the colours really invoke that sort of flame effect, don't they? So yeah, if you've got sarongs from the beach, a tea towel, a tablecloth, whatever you have to hand, or you can just use the plastic storage box. It doesn't have to look pretty. But it's always nice to have your aesthetic, isn't it? So, it also said you need a representation of the god and goddess. Now, as a little teenager, I didn't have any representation of the god and goddess. I was a brand new baby witch, and I still haven't quite grasped the ideas of god and goddess. But that's what the book said. It said this is how you make an altar, it has a god and goddess representation. And it suggested that you can use candles as your representations. So I was like, oh okay, candles are doable, we can do candles. It did suggest colours candles, it suggested, I think it gave a few suggestions of like black and white, or um, red and gold, I think another one was one of the options. But what I had to hand were some white pillar candles. Now these are nothing special, they are just white pillar candles that came in a pack of four from Sainsbury's. Um, Sainsbury's, for anybody who isn't from the UK and doesn't know Sainsbury's, is a supermarket. Um, on down the road we go and do our food shopping there. Um, and these came in a pack of four that I think we used for Christmas one year as like tape decorations um, but this is what we had to hand, this is what I had to hand leftover candles that I could use. So there we go, one god, one goddess. It also suggested that you needed a cauldron. Now, I didn't have a cauldron, I do now, I have quite a few cauldrons, I quite like to collect them, <laughs> maybe I'll show you one day, but at the time I didn't have a cauldron. But what is a cauldron? A cauldron is a vessel. It is something that holds usually liquid or anything else, but it's a vessel that can hold something. So what else is a vessel that can hold something? A bowl! <laughs> so this is literally just a ceramic bowl that, you know, part of our dinner set here at the house, my family use it to eat our cereal with. So, one bowl. It also suggested that you needed a chalice. A chalice, a very fancy word, it sounds quite sort of posh and intimidating. It makes you think of goblets and things. But what do people drink at goblets? What are they for? You know, when you read about Harry Potter and the goblet of it's something that holds something again, so I thought, well, a wine glass, a chalice, a goblet, a wine glass. They will basically do the same thing and can represent the same thing on your altar. So there we go. It also suggested in the wonderful Scott Cunningham book that you needed a wand or an athame. Now the way that it was described in Scott Cunningham's book was that a wand or an athame was kind of an either or thing. They served the same function and basically did the same thing, therefore directing energy within a circle. Now, as a teen, I didn't have access to blades of any description really, um, apart from the old kitchen knife. 
so I thought, mm, maybe not for now, let's go with a wand. Now, my little teenage self, a wand is a stick. A wooden thing that you can point at things with. So these are literally sticks from my garden that I have used in ritual. So, got one here that's quite straight. I like, I like the straight ones. Or you've got a slightly longer one with a curved end so it fits quite nicely in your hand. So, there you go. It also suggested in Scott Cunningham's book that you needed representations of the four elements. The four elements being earth, air, fire and water. Now a lot of people have um, incense for air or fire, um, water, some people use beautiful shells that they found, gorgeous pearl, um, mother of pearl things. Again, all quite pricey unless you can find them yourself. But it doesn't have to be, it can be really simple. So, for a representation of water, I have here a little measuring shot glass. It's got you know, teaspoons and tablespoons on it. Of water. Shot glasses are great for um, putting just small amounts of things in. If you had a little set of four of them, you could have a little bit of earth in one of them for earth, a little bit of water in another one and then air and fire. Use your imagination. Next one, for air, a feather, fairly self-explanatory. Find a feather outside somewhere. Now for fire, I would usually have a little tea light, you know, just something small um, that's easily transportable, but unfortunately all of my tea lights are <laughs> packed away at the moment um, and I can't get to them. I was surprised I could get to all of this stuff, to be honest. Uh, it was just in a slightly more accessible box. <laughs> um, but I do have a little representation here of Earth. No, a little plant is a fabulous representation of Earth, but I also think it is a fabulous representation of all of the elements combined because they need the fire of the sun to photosynthesize they need to absorb the water through their roots, um, they grow in the earth and when they die their matter goes back into the earth and becomes the soil and they provide the air that we breathe. So they're a fabulous representation if you don't have space or if you don't have anything else that you can represent the elements with. I think a plant is a fabulous all-in-one representation. And there we have it, my very first altar, or as close as I can get these days, because that was a very long time ago. <laughs> um, and it is all stuff that I found within my grasp as a little teenager. You don't have to have all of the fancy things immediately. I do now. I now have a beautiful chalice that I got for my birthday one year. I have a gorgeous athame that was made for me. I have cauldrons galore. <laughs> I like to collect cauldrons. Um, but I have built those things up over many, many years. I didn't start out with them and neither do you. You can start, all you need to start out with is a little bit of imagination and ingenuity and you can do anything. Thank you very much for watching and blessed people.